little something, Granny. I feel sorry for Mr. Drysdale. Well, that poor man might as well be single with his wife gone all the time. He's a lost soul, Jed. I was glad you invited him over for supper last night. But even my cooking didn't cheer him up. Yeah, I noticed he hardly touched his plate of grits and possum belly. <laughs> even when I spooned on some gopher gravy. <laughs> He didn't perk up till after supper, and Pearl started playing and singing. Don't tell me he liked Pearl's bellering. It wasn't bellering, it was yodeling. Well, it curdled the milk clean out to the kitchen. <laughs> Why, I've thrown shoes at tomcats that made prettier music than Pearl. I sure wish you two women would get along together. We ain't gonna get along together till she learns to stay out of my kitchen. I bet she's in there right now, sticking her long nose into my pots and pans. Why, she is. Just cool down. Oh. Hey, me, Jeff Green. What in the world have you been doing? Playing ball with some fellas down in the pasture. What's that thing? Well, this year's what you call a football helmet. Hey, me, I'm. I'm pretty near positive that a ball gown ain't for playing ball in. Well, the fellas seem to like it, didn't they, Jethrin? <laughs> they sure do, Uncle Jed. They's waiting for us right now to get some money to buy a new football. What happened to that one? Well, Jethrin was going to throw me a pipe, but I grabbed it too hard and it busted. <laughs> I ain't going to give you the money for another one. Oh, heck. But... That's all right, Jethrin. Remember? They said they'd be just as glad to play with us without a football. Come on! Put your granny down. Put down. She was fixing a whomp ma. I don't whomp her. Here, ma, now it's a fair fight. Yeah. I don't want to whomp nobody. Well, then you tell Pearl the next time she sticks her nose in one of my pots, I'm going to cook it. <laughs> it is my bounden duty as a mother to supervise the vittles of my growing children. Don't tell me they are still grown. <laughs> the Clampett side of the family has always been big, strong, strapping folks. It's your family that brought in the runts. <laughs> Who you call the runt? I think she meant you, Granny. <laughs> he's about as helpful as a high wind in a prayer fire. Come on, Pearl, you and me's gonna have a talk. Jethro, you stay here and help your Granny cool down. Okay, Uncle Jed. Uh, granny, would you rather I held you under the faucet here to cool off or took you out to the cement pond and ducked you? Try either one and I'll bash you flatter than a gander's arch. <laughs> Now, Pearl. Cousin Jed, I know just what you're going to say. You're going to say, Pearl, stay out of the kitchen. You're going to say, that's Granny's kitchen and it's none of your business. You're going to say, stay in your room where you belong. That's what you're going to say, ain't it? Ain't nothing like it at all. What I was going to say was, it seems to me that a handsome widow woman in the prime of life ought not to be hiding herself in the back part of the house, working over steaming pots and pans and dipping her piney playing fingers into soapy water and horsing up her beautiful singing voice yelling at Granny. That's what I was going to say. Praise be. Why don't I keep my big mouth shut and just listen? You know, Pearl, you got the gift of making music. And I reckon there ain't nothing these city fellas likes better than that. Really, Jay? Yeah, remember last night Mr. Drysdale was here and you was playing and singing and yodeling for him? Yeah. You brung that poor lonesome man a lot of happiness. Jed, you ain't agreeing me, are you? I'll give you my word. Remember that song you sung, uh, The Flowers That Bloom in the Spring, tra -la? Yeah. Well, you had Mr. Drysdale believing it was spring. No. Yeah. While you were still singing, he went and flung open the window, stuck his head out and started taking deep breaths just like he was really smelling them flowers. I reckon he liked my yodeling. Pearl, he liked it went wild. I reckon them city fellas don't get a chance to hear much yodeling. Because when you throwed your head back and cut loose, it really grabbed a hold of him. It did? He gripped the arms of his chair till his knuckles turned white. <laughs> then he commenced to rocking back and forth and moaning like he's under some kind of a spell. <laughs> and his eyes commenced to circling in his head, and real tears run down his cheeks. Before you got done, he was limp as a dishrag. I had to help him to the door. 
Uncle Jed, I can't seem to do nothing to cool Granny off. Ain't no need to, Jethro. Your pretty, young, piany playing ma has decided not to hide herself away out in the kitchen. That's a good idea, Ma, because Granny, she'd find you and whomp you. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, you stay out here and practice playing and singing and yodeling. I'll take care of Granny. I wonder if I should have told Uncle Jed that Granny's waiting behind the door with a skillet to whomp the first person that sets foot in her kitchen. <laughs> Reckon I should have. Jed, I'm sorry. I thought it was Pearl coming in. Granny, you done shorten me. I'll make a poultice for your head right away now, kid. Right away. <laughs> I'm telling you, Granny, you don't have to worry no more about Pearl coming in your kitchen. She's going to be spending her time getting herself a husband with her singing and yodeling. Yeah, it ain't legal to torture a man into marrying you. You just don't realize the power Pearl's yodeling's got over men. Last night, Mr. Drysdale liked to went wild. Pretty <laughs> near drove me crazy, too. He loved it, Granny. I bet you he's got that yodeling ring in his ears right now. <laughs> I can still hear it. An unearthly screechy. No, Chief, surely it wasn't that bad. Well, I can best describe it as the sound a woman might make if she were having her appendix removed without an anesthetic. Susan, <laughs> <laughs> darling. Margaret, I'm so glad to have you back, dear. What a cunning hat, dear. Is it you? Uh, oh. <laughs> Welcome home, Mrs. Drysdale. Thank you. Mildred, I have the most marvelous news. I'm going to a health farm in Arizona. What? Some women were talking about it on the plane. It's terribly chic, quite expensive, and you don't need any willpower. They just force you to be healthy. The doctors are all deliciously mean. <laughs> but, Margaret, you are healthy. Every doctor in the United States says you're healthy. But, dear, this is different. They reduce you as well. <laughs> Margaret, if you want to lose weight, just stay home and we'll have dinner at the Clampets every night. Now, you, you can't eat the food, but you won't leave hungry. <laughs> because Cousin Pearl will yodel your appetite away. <laughs> but, Milburn, it's so fashionable to go to a health farm. Oh, Margaret, please stay home and run the place for a while. You have plenty of servants. Yes, but we have no one to manage the place. And with both of us away most of the time, the servants are asleep on the job. Well, we'll just hire a good, efficient housekeeper. Oh, yes, just try and find one. Oh, Margaret, please stay home. <laughs> All right. That's the way you feel. Miss Hathaway, I'll stay home, just as you wish. That's my darling. Yes, Mrs. Dorito? Telephone the pharmacy and have all my prescriptions refilled. And call my psychiatrist, my neurologist, my internist and my osteopath and have them come over. Oh, and I'll need nurses around the clock. I just know the servant problem's going to bring on a nervous breakdown. All right, all right, go to the health farm. No, no. My place is at home. Please go to the health farm. <laughs> all right. If you're sure, that's what you want. Oh, I want it, I want it, I want it. <laughs> Milburn, I promised to come back a new woman. Goodbye. Just think, Milburn, you'll have a young, glamorous wife. Slim, trim, beautiful. <laughs> All right, start looking for a new housekeeper. Won't do any good, Chief. We've been through this with... Mr. Drysdale's office. Who's calling, please? Uh, tell him it's a surprise. Surprise? That's what she says. Melbourne Drysdale speaking. <laughs> what in the world is that? That is Pearl Bodine yodeling. Now, when she comes up for air, tell her I was drafted. Chief, <laughs> she might be the answer to your housekeeping problem. What? Uh, be, be nice to her, I'll explain. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Bodine. How nice to hear your voice again. <laughs> you say? Mr. Clabbit says that Pearl is such an industrious housekeeper that Granny is jealous. She might take over your house and hers and solve both your problems. What about that yodeling? I won't be there. And I defy any service to sleep on the job with Pearl around. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Bodine. I, I wonder if I might come over and talk to you for a while. Uh, what, talk to me? Well, what about? 
I think you may be just the woman I've been looking for. Yeah. You take over the running of my house? Well, well, yes. It, 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 come right ahead. Can we say three o'clock? Let's say two. Goodbye. <laughs> Will you stop that infernal caterwauling of yours? It might be infernal caterwauling to you, but it's pure catnip to me. I looky there. I hit such a perfect note, it busted the glass. It wasn't your voice that busted the glass. It was your face. <laughs> we'll see who gets the last laugh when my sweetie comes. <laughs> what, sweetie? That's for me to know and you to find out. Ha, ha, ha. nice of you to share your soap with Miss Drydale. Well, with my life soap, she'll be happy to stay home and do her housework. <laughs> Ready? Most powerful batch of soap that you ever made. Just a breeze blowing the back on me on the way over here has got me crying. I make a big soap to do a big job. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Drydale. Hello, hello. Goodbye, goodbye. Where are you going? Milbert is sending me to a health farm. Martin, I'll be loaded. Yes, ma'am. Well, let's fly, fly, fly. Well, uh, just a minute, Miss Drysdale. Your granny may bring you something. Yeah, honey. Take a good whiff of this. How nice of you. Tell the gardener to speed it in around the rose bushes. <laughs> Toodaloo. Oh, just a minute, ma'am. Granny and me would like to talk to you. I have time. The sooner I go, the sooner Melbourne will have his new wife. Did you say new wife? Completely new. Young, glamorous, slim, trim, and beautiful. Oh, Martin, uh, did we pack my medicine? Sixteen bottles, Mrs. Drysdale. <laughs> Drive on. Toodaloo. How could a woman be so cheerful about her husband getting a younger wife? You heard her. She's loaded. Yeah, both of them sued to the gills. Who do you reckon is the woman that busted them up? Hard to tell, Granny. There's so many young, beautiful women out here. Yeah. Probably one of them glamorous movie stars. Hey, Ma. You sure are all fancied up. Do I look like one of them glamorous movie stars? Yeah, by golly, you do. <laughs> Which one? Milton Sills. <laughs> Go on and get out of here. Now, now, listen. You find your sister, Jeffreen, and your cousin, Ellie Mae, and tell them to start practicing to be bridesmaids for my wedding. Are you getting married, Ma? Well, it ain't official yet, but I sure got him anxious. <laughs> Keep going. I think we have it about 15 minutes. Mrs. Bodine. Why, Mr. Drysdale, you are anxious. <laughs> if I'd have had a little more notice, I'd have baked your sweet potato pies one more special. Oh. Watch that, John. Thank you. Here, I'll take your hat. Yes, sir, I just love to cook, and I love to sew, and I love to keep house. Yes, I've heard you're an exceptional housekeeper. But I ain't one of them fussy ones. No, sir, not me. I say a man's home is his castle. And it is the duty of a woman to make him comfortable. Oh. <laughs> there we go. 
Yes, a man works hard all day. And when he gets home, he has a right to enjoy himself. <laughs> Take off his shoes. And relax. And listen to some soothing music to calm his jangled nerves. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Bodine, not like that. Mr. Drysdale, I've got to ask you to keep a grip on yourself. Uh, We're all alone in the house. If you want me to keep a grip on myself, I must ask you not to play or sing a yodel. I understand. Kind of makes you go all to pieces. Yes, it does. Well, you can come on back and you sit down while Mr. Drysdale, you're perspiring. Why, you got to get relaxed. But please. A man can't say what's on his mind unless he's resting easy. <laughs> Land sakes. And with that tie and collar a choking you, it's a wonder you can talk at all. Oh, Mrs. Bodine, I'll be all right. Really, I will. Mr. Dreisty, huh? you got a hole in your stocking. Oh. It's nothing to be ashamed of. When a man ain't got a woman around to care for him, them things is bound to happen. <laughs> 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 now, look, I'm going to let you sit easy, and I'm going to darn that up before you know it. Oh, Mrs. Baldino, really, I can manage. Now, 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 I ain't taking orders yet. No, please, give me back my sock. Now, get, get, get. Oh, give me my sock. I know how to handle you. Ah, oh, <laughs> Granny, Ma's going to get married. What? Oh, too. Well, she wouldn't tell me, but she was expecting him any minute. I reckon he's inside right now. Let's go in and see who it is. Miss <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> no! No! Oh, no, please! Oh, no, please! No! No, Miss Bobby! <laughs> no! No! Oh, no, please! Mr. Dryden! I reckon Pearl is a young, beautiful woman that busted up his marriage. Huh? It's been her singing and yodeling that drove him to it. <laughs> Mr. Oh. Christie. <laughs> Mr. Crappett. It was just uh, your cousin and I were. Oh, no, no, we weren't. <laughs> Jethro, leave the room. Leave the house. <laughs> Did you have to come back right now? We was just going great. Her. What's the matter with you? Man crazy, always was. Mr. Crazy, you. Get yourself decent. I'll be back to talk to you. <laughs> Shame on you! You too, Pearl, you homewrecker. I didn't know what you're talking about. You told me that Mr. Drysdale was crazy about my yodeling, so I called him at the bank and I yodeled, and he come a running over here to see me. You done yodeled your way twixt Mr. Drysdale and his wife? <laughs> wife? I didn't know he had a wife. Well, he has. The sweetest, kindest, nicest, drunkenest woman you ever saw. <laughs> you done sent her to the farm. Put her out to pasture so he can marry you. <laughs> you seen her leave Oh, she knows about you, Pearl. Said her husband was going to get a new wife. Young, glamorous, slim, beautiful. Jed, that can't be Pearl. <laughs> You're forgetting what a powerful spell her voice throws on a man. Now, Pearl, I'm going back in there and try to talk some sense to Mr. Drysdale. Whatever you do, don't yodel. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clappett, I'm, I'm terribly embarrassed about the picture we must have presented when you came in, but I assure you, I wasn't at fault. Yes, your cousin Pearl is one of the most... Yeah, my cousin Pearl admitted that she called you on the telephone and stirred you up. But she didn't know you were going to send your wife away to make room for her. Oh, but I didn't. In the first place, my wife is never home. Second place, if she does come home, there's still plenty of room for both of them. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, I, I hear tell that uh, you folks out here behaves might different than we used to. I know you're carrying a heavy load on account of your wife. But I just can't let my cousin Pearl get uh, mixed up in any kind of goings on like that. <laughs> well then, if I can't have Pearl, can I have Granny?
Lord love you. You're a desperate man. What are they saying? How can I hear when you keep pestering me? Jed told you not to yodel. I was screaming. Tell the difference. What in the world happened to you? We was playing football with some boys. Yeah, and they sure was dumb. Catherine was a toting the ball, and they kept a tackling me. <laughs> Go get cleaned up, both of you. But Jethro says you want us to be bridesmaids at your wedding. Yeah, who you marrying, Aunt Pearl? What's his name, Ma? Puddin' and Tame. Ask me again, and I'll tell you the same. Now, get upstairs. <laughs> That's a funny name, Puddin' and Tame. <laughs> oh, Ma don't care. She once said she'd marry Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> well, I like Jethrine Tank better than Jethrine Dumpty. <laughs> that poor man in there is so sick of his drinking wife, he is wanting to marry either one of you two. Last one in is an old maid. <laughs> He's trying to save the marriage, not bust it up, and I think I got an idea that'll do it. Now, I want you two to wait in the kitchen, and when I bring Mr. Drysdale in, I want the two. Yes, sir, Mr. Drysdale. Well, both them fine, hard-working, good-cooking, housekeeping women is in the kitchen there. All you have to do is go in there and take your pick. Oh, this is marvelous of you. Nobody knows. Oh, Nobody no. Knows. And they took the pledge. <laughs> That's Why not? It's all downhill. Make <laughs> your pick now, Mr. Drysdale, while I can still walk over to your house. Oh, he's gonna pick me. Ain't you, sweetie, Melby? Oh, no, he ain't. He's gonna take me, ain't he? He gets your banker grabbing hands off of them. Oh, you shove it, fella. I don't want to give you a good feeling. <sighs> yeah. Well, I'm kind of winded. I think I'll go upstairs and rest. Call me when lunch is ready, Granny. Oh, now, just a minute, Pearl, honey. We got a lot of mess to clean up here. Now, Granny, darling, you give me strict orders to stay out of your kitchen. Remember? <laughs> Why, you rode down. No, <laughs> here we go 